Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN, of whom more later. A little while back, not very long ago, I did a video on the subject of the Isle of Dogs and the possible derivations of the name. I mean, it is a pretty weird name. Apart from anything else, it's not even an island. I'll put a link to the original video up there in the corner if I remember. As a quick rundown though, the possible derivations I covered were that hunting dogs were kept here, hunting dogs were employed here, or that it may be a corruption of Isle of Ducks or Isle of Dykes in reference to the marshes that used to be here, or Isle of Doggers as in fishing boats and not anything else your filthy mind might be thinking when I say the word dogger. There are three other possible derivations I've come across, which I will discuss later. There was another derivation that a lot of people suggested in the comments that I did not talk about, and that is Isle of Docks. Now, on the face of it, this seems very reasonable. After all, the Isle of Dogs is in the Docklands, and it did have docks. The West India and Millwall docks were here and indeed they still are to some extent. However, I can confidently say that this is not the origin of the name, and I will tell you why. The name Isle of Dogs dates back to the 16th century, at least. But the first docks here, the West India docks, were not constructed until the first decade of the 19th century. The Millwall dock opened in 1868. In fact, if you were to talk about the docks in London, people would instantly think of the much older wharves and quays of the City of London, which had their origin in the Roman era. In fact, it would have been illegal to unload on the island because there were no customs facilities. The docks in the city were incredibly busy, and by the end of the 18th century they had become so congested that the government were forced to lift the old restrictions and allow docks to be built elsewhere. As ships and traffic increased, newer and larger docks were constructed eastward, culminating in the massive royal docks in the 19th and 20th centuries. Personally, when I want to get around restrictions, I use Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN that allows you to virtually set your location to any one of over a hundred different countries. Which means that you can get around things like region locks and take advantage of region-specific pricing. Surfshark can also, uniquely, be used on unlimited devices, so that's another restriction you don't have to worry about. I mean, it's not totally without restrictions. Thanks to its advanced encryption, criminals, governments and other ne'er-do-wells are restricted from spying on you. Sometimes the price of VPN services can be restrictive, so viewers of this channel can get 83% off a two-year plan with three months extra free, and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Just click on the link in the description below and enter the code JAGO to tell them I sent ya. Now, on the subject of locations, let's segue back. Legal restrictions weren't the only reason no one thought to build docks here. The further east you went, the less there was, which in some ways was a good thing. Cheaper land, fewer irate residents to kick out, but the real question was transport. New docks were of little use if you didn't also have a means to get the goods from here to the city. The Isle of Dogs was difficult, marshy terrain, no friend to a horse and cart. It wasn't until decent roads arrived with the first docks in the early 19th century that it was remotely practical to transport goods from here. In the 1840s, the first railways arrived on the island, which could carry more goods faster. So there you go, the Isle of Dogs is not derived from Isle of Docks because it doesn't make sense timeline-wise, or does it? There was a dock of sorts, or rather a tidal inlet known by the truly excellent name of Drunken Dock. In the ongoing spirit of etymology, I should point out that drunken could also mean submerged. While it wasn't legal to unload here, boats could be beached for repair. Later, it was used by local shipbuilders. Drunken Dock existed until some unknown point in the second half of the 19th century, when it was filled in. 
So there was a dock on the Isle of Dogs, but not a large or notable one. So I think again we are fairly safe to discount this as the origin. Now, I mentioned three other possible derivations. One is related to Isle of Dykes, as I mentioned before. The story goes that when it came to draining the marshland here, Dutch engineers were employed in building the dikes. Therefore, a possible origin is Isle of Dutch. I can certainly see how you might get from one to the other, especially with the inconsistency of 16th century spelling. Another revolves around a local landowner named Brack or Brash, which was a type of hunting dog. It's true to say that quite often the derivation of an unusual place name comes from a notable person who lived there in time immemorial, whenever that was. The third and final possibility is perhaps the most interesting, or at least the most gruesome and that's often the same thing. Dog and various synonyms are commonly used as an insult. Up until probably the 20th century, calling someone a cur or a puppy was fighting words. You just didn't do it in polite society. And I can think of at least one other dog-derived epithet for women that I shall not repeat here because my mum watches these videos. Certainly, as far back as the 18th century, the bodies of executed pirates were displayed here, hanging from gibbets. The practice may have dated back even further as a deterrent. I can imagine that sailors passing around the bend of the river might have referred to these deceased enemies as dogs, and therefore might well have talked about the Isle of Dogs. So, once again, I have totally failed to solve the mystery, but we got pirates in there, so that's fun. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, please do consider subscribing for more, or just leaving a like. A big thank you to my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon and here on YouTube for your generous support. You are the road to my dock. Thanks also to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Please click on the link in the description below to take advantage of their generous offer. And I will see you all again very soon. Cheerio.